there's Quinnen Williams as he throws down Teddy Bridgewater. Barrios on the return. Barrios across midfield. The Jets are back home and once again taking on the NFC as they welcome in the New Orleans Saints to MetLife Stadium. And hello everybody, welcome to the numbers game presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport, bet together at WinBet. I'm your host Dan Grassa, joined as always by my pal. She of course from the NFL Network, it is my good friend Cynthia Freeland. Cynthia, we're almost to the middle of December already if you can believe it. How are you? I'm, why is the time going so fast? Will you slow down a little bit? It's like I don't want it to be week 14 yet. I need like it feels like it's week seven. <laughs> Got to enjoy each and every one of these last five weeks that we still have of the season. But you're absolutely right about that, though. Let's rewind, though, to last Sunday here for the New York Jets. It was a 33 to 18 defeat against the Philadelphia Eagles in MetLife Stadium. Unbelievably, they fall to 0-12 all time against the Birds here. And it was a tough day for the Jet defense. Philadelphia scored on their first seven possessions of the football game and the offense just could not keep up for 60 minutes. However, there were some positives when you talk about the offense, namely the play of Zach Wilson in the first half of this football game because Zach led the offense to touchdown drives on the first three possessions of the afternoon. And Cynthia, you could tell with this being his second game back from injury, you could start to see some of that rust maybe go off to the side and he looked a lot more comfortable in the pocket directing this offense. He looked a lot more comfortable in the pocket. He had in the first half like a crazy high passer rating, well deserved, over 133. Like this is very, very high number. And that means that those 15 to 20 scripted plays, the ones that they practice all week long, that means it's clicking. That means this is coming together. These are very encouraging signs. And if you look at the passer rating too, his first six games of the season versus the two since he's come back, you've seen an uptick in production as far as that's concerned as well. Yeah, when you look to see in the first few games of the season, what it's the QBR, I guess we'll look at that one, 74.1 since returning, 63.5 in his first six games. So he, you're starting to see this. It's coming together. This is what's supposed to happen. Remember, rookies don't know how to play in the NFL yet. It's a fact. And how about this? Rushing touchdowns for Zach in each of the two games since he's come back from injury. Even though they weren't 20, 25 yards, they were still near the goal line, but they count for just the amount of points just the same there, though. You know, last week, if you remember, we were talking about Pro Bowl voting being underway, and we decided to spotlight a couple of members of that Jet defense here. But you know what? Let's show some love to the offense as well, specifically the play of George Fant, who's done a nice job since sliding over to the left tackle position after Mekhi Becton went down in week one, and Braxton Berrios, who doubles as a return man, a wide receiver in this offense. Both of those gentlemen are having very, very strong seasons, I think, for the green and white. Yeah, I think George Fans, his pass blocking grade for week 13 was 85.1 per PFF, which is great. So that's a tough position just in general left tackle. Obviously, some people call it the third most difficult position when you do your draft or you quarterback, you do the pass rusher and then you do your left tackle. So super important and super impactful. So I love a good special teams moment. Braxton Barris is like, we're, we're going to make this happen. How many retweets do we need to have? Like, we need to do, I'll do some math on how many retweets we need to get this to happen though, because I want Braxton Barris at that Pro Bowl. Vegas, it's close to me. I'll go see him. We can give a high five. It'll be awesome. Boy, Pro Bowl, Vegas. I don't think anything bad can happen there in terms of the fun quality, but you know what? We want to send as many Jets there as possible. All right, let's get to our go. first. Absolutely. Let's get to our first prop bet of the show here today. We'll say on the offensive side of the ball, 315 yards over under for this Jets offense going up against a pretty good Saints defense on Sunday at MetLife. You know, I think that the strategy is going to be smart yards, not necessarily tons and tons of yards. And remember, yards and points, it seems better to have a ton of yards, but more points is more the important part. So I think that's like, uh, like right about right, but maybe I'm, I'm going to go just a little bit less than that. Why? Because it's going to be, this is a hard team to run on, and it's going to be really smart, shorter passes, kind of drain the clock, but fewer possessions. I agree with you. I'm going to say the under as well. I mean, if you think about the Jets offense the last couple of weeks, yeah, they've scored some points, but they've only averaged about 275 yards of offense. The scoreboard is what matters more so than the amount of yards that you're able to accumulate up and down the field. So I will join you with that under pick. For the you got to get these numbers though. You got to right. I got a number for you. It's 22.8, and that's the points per game that the Jets have averaged since Week Eight. And by the way, the Saints defense they've allowed over 27 points in five of their last six contests. So if you ask me, it's like I said, maybe, maybe fewer yards, but nice 
production, you got to get a lot of points. It's what you do with those yards that make the count, right? The scoreboard is the most important thing, and I think that's what the Jets care about on Sunday afternoon. Speaking of those New Orleans Saints, you know what? We're going to talk about them when we return here on the numbers game. It's presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. People think betting is about what you know. It's also about who you're with. And with the WinBet Sports Betting and Casino app, you bet with Win. Ben, look at this, look at this. New York plus three and a half at home. They're 44 and 22. Hey, no New York bets. Hey. Hope you didn't bet on Boston. Shaq, did you bet on Boston? I went with Greg on this one. He has a whole system. <laughs> big payout, big payout, big payout, big payout. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Greg, man. Yes? What is the Greg system? I pick by color, mostly. And welcome back to the numbers game presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. So, Cynthia, it's back to the NFC again for the New York Jets here. They're going to welcome in the New Orleans Saints, a Saints team that has almost been like a tale of two seasons for them. They began the season at 5-2. and two. Then their starting quarterback, Jameis Winston, gets hurt, and now they've lost five consecutive games. They're winless since Jameis went down. They tried Trevor Simeon. Now they're on to Taysom Hill, throw in a bunch of other key members of this football team that are injured. Saints have undergone some adversity here over the last five or six weeks. And yet, due to the way that the playoffs work in the NFC, they're still like a contender, a strong contender, too, with the way some of the tiebreakers work, too. So pretty, pretty interesting how different the AFC versus the NFC is because AFC teams might get 11 wins and, and be like, oh, we're, 11 will get you in, but 10 could maybe not. A lot more parity on the NFC side of things. And what else this game is going to represent on Sunday, Cynthia? It's going to be like a BYU quarterback reunion because you got Zach Wilson on the Jets side and Taysom Hill for the New Orleans Saints. And Taysom Hill is one of these guys who, yes, he's a little unconventional, but he is a dual threat. He could throw the football. And oh, by the way, he can gallop with it as well. Yep. So last week against Dallas, we saw something interesting. We saw an interesting like four interception game. We also saw him rush for 100 yards. So you, you kind of see how he is a dual threat on every single down. You know, it's interesting to see where those interceptions came. Well, they came, three of them came on passes of 10 plus air yard attempts, meaning downfield passes, anything that's not short. And then you saw the blitz was a source of interceptions, which is something that Robert Sal is probably looking at. And then under pressure, he actually had negative one passing yard. That's like a next gen stat uh, era history, becoming the first quarterback in next gen stats history to throw for negative yards under pressure. So it's just interesting to see the different ways that it could be, it, it could go because it's, it's obviously he, they go the way his his rushing goes. No doubt about it. So the Jets are going to have to be on their toes when it comes to their defense here. And one of the guys that they're going to look to, and he's really had himself a very, very good year, it's the second-year cornerback out of Virginia, Bryce Hall, who, you know, despite that little iffy pass interference call that he got flagged for last week against Philadelphia, guy had himself another very, very good game. Yes, he allowed 23 total yards on two receptions. That is awesome. He, again, showed up big in a game where, obviously, look, Gardner Minshew, it was a last-minute substitution. There was a lot of craziness going on around it, but Bryce Hall's like, no problem. I got this. It's, it's no big deal at all, and I think that's going to be exactly how he goes into this next one as well. Continues to be a big find for the Jets in the middle rounds of that draft in 2020. All right, let's get to another prop bet here for this game. Total points-wise between the Jets and the Saints, let's do over-under 43-and-a-half for Sunday. What are you thinking? Okay, so that means like 20s, mid-20s each. I think slightly more. I think this is a team, I told you before, the, the two kind of stats that we've seen in the past, the trends in recent weeks with scoring. And I do think that the Jets come out looking really strong. Again, yes, if Cam Jordan doesn't play, that's very helpful for, you know, he, he, you know, for this offense because he's a great pass rusher. But I think I think some fun things happen, and they've got some things up their sleeves, just like we saw at the beginning of the Eagles game, too. Cam Jordan's absence will be a big one. He's dealing with a COVID situation right now here. I'm going to go slightly over as well. I like the way that this offense is trending. You know, the Saints on the road. I'm not necessarily sold about them coming into the elements here and a little maybe non-dome-like conditions at MetLife Stadium on Sunday. So I'm going to say both of these offenses might be able to move the ball a little bit. And I'll go a little bit over the number that we said they're 43 and a half. So we're in agreement once again. It's like we're copying each other's tests in the classroom, we Cynthia. Are. But you know what? Hey, great minds think alike. That's how I always like to say it. Before we get out of Dodge, though, let's also pay tribute to something really cool that the Jets and the entire National Football League 
are a part of. Last week, you might have noticed all throughout the league, the players in the NFL were in conjunction with the My Cause, My Cleats. And what that was is that players wore custom designed cleats illustrating the causes that were important to them. And the game worn cleats themselves are going to be up for auction. All proceeds will benefit charity. You can check it out at nflauction.nfl.com. And Cynthia, the cool part about it is, is that you and I are going to reveal the final totals, hopefully, a little bit later on in the season when we do one of our final episodes of the Numbers Game. See how much money that these cleats are going to generate for really a good cause. I love that. I love that we get to announce that, too. That's so fun. Absolutely. And maybe we get a chance to design our own kind of shoes, maybe, for, the, for that last show. I'm not very much of an artist. I will say that. Maybe something very simple, like a paint-by-number type thing. I could do that. But any terms of creativity with the... I'm not exactly Michelangelo, if you know what I'm saying. All right, that is Cynthia Freeland. I'm Dan Grassa. Thanks for joining us again on the Numbers Game, presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. So long, everybody.